वेलकम टू प्री फैब्रिकेटेड स्ट्रक्चर्स टूडेज वीडियो इन प्री फैब्रिकेटेड स्ट्रक्चर्स इट इज रिलेटेड टू प्री फैब्रिकेटेड कंपाउंडमेंट विच इज शेयर वॉल दीज आर द सिंपल टाइप्स ऑफ शेयर वॉल्स सो शेयर वॉल्स आर द अंडर फोर्सेस एंड हॉरिजॉन्टल शेयर अलॉन्ग इट्स लेंथ आर सब्जेक्टेड टू बेंडिंग एंड शेयर to resist the forces the uniform distribution of steel along this length is used in simple shear walls so what are the shear walls shear walls are vertical elements of the horizontal force resisting system vertical elements of the horizontal force resisting system means these are similar to the walls walls are also known as the shear walls but the exactly shear wall is provided for the horizontal forces which are acting on it will be particularly taken into resistance so when they are taken into resistance that time we can say the particular form work or the particular wall is known as the shear wall so shear walls are constructed to counter the effects of lateral load acting on the structure so why the shear walls are required these are required to counter the effect of lateral loads so lateral loads which are the lateral loads earthquake is the lateral load wind load is the lateral load so these type of loadings when they are acting to come over these lateral loads we are constructing the shear walls in these structures so usually in normal buildings the perpendicular walls which are the external walls are there those act as a small elements of a shear wall because there is no reinforcement provided in those particular walls those are the totally brick walls or a stone masonry and this part they will be acting bit less as known as shear walls where we are able to consider in residential construction shear walls are straight external walls that typically form a box which provides all the lateral load support for the building the same thing which is the shear wall importance of shear walls when shear walls are designed and constructed properly the and they will have the strength and stiffness to resist the horizontal force strength and stiffness means they are good enough and able to take care about the horizontal forces in building construction a rigid vertical diaphragm in building construction a rigid vertical diaphragm capable of transferring lateral forces from exterior wall force and roofs to the ground foundation in a direction parallel to their planes so when it comes with the tall buildings that time shear wall acts as a one of the reinforced component wherein the lateral walls the normal walls will not be acting but in vertical tall buildings the external walls which are constructed with the rcc such as we can see the construction of the particular water tank sometimes we have seen the water tank is constructed from ground to top with a whole core as a reinforced structure unnecessarily they are not constructing they are constructing because the lateral loads are too much on that particular area lateral forces caused by wind earthquake and uneven settlement loads are also there uneven settlements also allow the lateral loads so somewhere the soil is not good that time the uneven settlements occur in addition to weight of the structure and occupants create powerful twisting torsion forces now the weight of the structure is there that too there uh, we will be able to see that the habitants or the occupants who are going to live or who are going to utilize the particular structure because of their loads when they are moving from here and there when the particular interiors or the particular super dead load materials are moving that moment we can say some loads are going to be generated that loads will be nothing but the torsion will be acting in the structure the structure may not be able to see the torsions forces so to overcome those torsion forces shear walls are the great resisting forces reinforcing a frame by attaching or placing a rigid wall inside it maintains that shape of the frame and prevents rotation 
so frame when we rotate and placing a rigid wall inside it maintains that shape of the frame so we can see a beam and column frame so if we are able to have a force or rotation it will try to rotate in any direction so now there is a connection going to get dismantled at column and beam particularly if it tries to move in this direction it will be having another dismantulation if it is going to move in this direction it is going to have another dismantulation so if we provide this particular wall with a periphery wall so there is a wall in between means this particular is as a shear wall so this shear wall we what we will be considering so this beam and this column will be kept in one particular position then there is no movement so we are able to fix up with the particular frames also so the rotation and the joints in the frames are also protected by the shear walls last two decades shear walls become an important part of our mid high rise buildings so shear wall frame structures are obtained shear wall buildings are usually regular in plan and in elevation we don't see any separate wall as a shear wall the wall which is constructed as a external wall or as a core wall for the lift or we can say a wall for the particular uh, aesthetic view or anything that sometimes act as the shear wall for the building some buildings lower floors are used for a commercial purposes and the buildings are characterized with the large plan dimensions at those floors so the particular dimensions are large because we can see only external wall is constructed internal is not constructed that time that acts as the shear wall of the particular floor purpose of constructing shear walls shear walls are not only designed to resist gravity or vertical loads to its self weight and living moving loads also but they are also designed for a lateral loads of earthquake and wind the walls are structurally integrated with roofs floors and other laterals attachments so what it means means the construction of shear walls is not only for particular load we are not increasing the gravity load we are going to restrain them earthquake load wind load and then we are going to consider shear wall structural systems are more stable because they are supporting the area so we can say they are supporting the area means the large cross sectional area of a shear wall is occupied with reference to the total plan area of the building is comparatively more unlikely in the case of rcc frame structures so in case of rcc frame structures shear walls whatever the brick walls are there that will be more in quantity as compared to our rcc frames so here the resistance force is more of the uh, walls and less of the uh, rcc uh, frame structures walls have to resist the uplift forces caused by pull of the wind walls have to resist the shear forces that try to push the walls over the walls have to resist the lateral forces of the wind that tries to push the walls and pull pull them away from the building so sometimes what happens the wall is like this way a wind is acting when the wind is acting it will be try to push so it is pushed and it is pulled by the wind walls so when they are moving in the other end uh, fro movement this will try to get dismantled so this should not happen means for we are going to embed at this particular end and we are embed at this particular end even at the sides we will be fixing them so that they are not moving with the wind how the wind is going to act on them wall floors and roofs of a ground foundation in a direction parallel to their planes lateral forces caused by the wind earthquake even settlement loads in addition to the structure and equipments create a powerful twisting forces so these are the reasons um, the same thing but um, so comparison of a shear wall with the construction of the load bearing walls load bearing machinery is very brittle material due to different kinds of stresses such as a shear tensile caused by the earthquake and unconventional um, reinforced brick collapses instantly during the unpredictable and sudden earthquakes the rcc frames are slender in structure when compared to shear wall concept of box like three dimensional structure 
though it is possible to design the earthquake resistance rcc frame it requires extraordinary skills at design detailing and construction levels on the other hand even moderately designed wall, shear wall structures not only more stable but also comparatively quite ductile in safety terms it means that during a sequence of a sway, severe earthquakes they will not suddenly collapse causing death or of a people or anything the shear walls will going to have the particular strength to restrain the earthquake also they give enough indicative warnings such as widening structural cracks yielding rods etc offering most uh, precious moment for people to run off of the structure before the totally get collapsed so the structure is going to give some warning as um, as comparison with the normal buildings so normal buildings are going to get collapsed suddenly without any warning and all things because the reinforcements are not provided and the particular structure is not so good of carrying the twisting loads or lateral loads that time so forces on the shear wall so shear walls are resist of two types of forces shear forces and uplift forces shear forces are the side forces so shear forces are generated in the stationary buildings by accelerating resulting from ground movement and by forces like wind and waves these action creates shear forces throughout the height of the wall between the top and the bottom shear wall connection so what do you mean by the shear forces so to react this particular shear forces we are creating the wall that is known as shear wall so this shear wall is the particular part of Uh, resistance force then uplift forces uplift force on the exist on a shear wall because the horizontal forces are applied on the top of the wall the uplift forces try to lift up of the one end of the wall and push the other end down in some cases the uplift process is in a large enough to the tip of the all wall over uh, uplift forces are greater on tall uh, short walls buildings uplift shear walls need hold down devices to act at each end when the gravity loads cannot resist up all the uplift the hold down devices then provides the necessary uplift resistance so how this is the this particular wall is there when we are able to see so uplift force will be tipping up at this particular end and if the uplift pressure is tipping up at this particular end so we can see the horizontal wall will become as a inclined wall so this side the settlement will be there and here will be the upliftment so if we have the constant weight or the weight of the particular wall is known as this so this uplift pressure can be bounded or if we hold at the downward side if we hold at the downward side that time the uplift pressure may not be trying to allow the uh, move by the wall so we are resisting and we are restricting the uplift pressure so there then is no settlement of the particular structure thank you and see you in the next video